Video game graphics have changed so much over the last few decades, so we were thinking why not go back and have a look. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the 10 best video game graphics then versus now. Number 10, the original Doom versus Doom 2016. Now, <laughs> there's some obvious differences between these two games. First off, all the monsters in the original Doom are sprites. All the monsters in the Doom 2016 reboot are high polygon count character models. On top of that, the world of Doom is actually kind of a trick. I won't go into deep depth, but it's essentially drawn out in 2D, and because of this, you can't have rooms on top of rooms. In Doom 2016, obviously, that's totally changed. You can 3D model anything you want, and the kinds of hardware software limitations that we had in the 1990s are essentially non-existent today. In the original Doom, characters were sculpted from clay and photos were taken. Weapons were toys, spray painted and photographed, being held by a one of the artist's arms. There's nothing like that now. Although it is kind of remarkable just how close the tone is with these two versions of Doom. The original Doom experiencing so many technical limitations, while the new Doom basically made it so you could do anything that's in your imagination. People just wanted to imagine the old Doom. I mean, with 3D polygonal rendering, much better effects, and a polish that was not even imaginable at that time, but still. Number 9, Call of Duty 1 versus Call of Duty Black Ops 4. And while the difference may not be quite as drastic as Doom versus Doom 2016, looking at these two games next to each other might kind of shock you just how different they are. The original Call of Duty came out on Microsoft Windows. It was 2003, and a lot of the technology of the day is on display. There's a lot of flat ground, a lot of very boxy buildings, very, very rudimentary weather, boxy character models, pretty much nothing in the way of vegetation, and very little detail. Whereas if you look at Call of Duty Black Ops 4, basically every frame is gorgeous. It's such a well-realized, beautiful game that even if you aren't super happy about the lack of inclusion of a campaign, it's still pretty. Like if you're talking about outdoor environments, there's grass, there's beautiful reflective water, there's hills. It's never just a plane. It looks more like a real place, but interiors are also quite amazing as well. There's wires hanging everywhere. Everything's got texture. Weapons are hugely detailed and well, what we saw way back in 2003 was certainly above a lot of things from the 1990s. In some ways, it was still kind of that. GoldenEye, though technically less detailed, kind of was more interesting visually still than Call of Duty 2003. But to see just how far Call of Duty has come these years is pretty wild. Number eight, way back in the year 2000, Spider-Man came out on the PlayStation. Yes, the PlayStation, the first one. The difference between this game and the game that came out on the PlayStation 4 last year is almost impossible to completely describe. Well, I definitely have to give the 2000 Spider-Man a lot of credit for having an awesome color palette of various pastels and neons. That's about it. In order to seem like you're high up in the air, there's always fog on the ground. Part of the problem this creates is that they seem to have thought that all you have to have is the buildings that are part of the level, and for the most part, the other buildings are simply the background. They're drawn and they're way off beyond a bunch of fog, which really makes it not seem a lot like a city, or at very least a very strange city. Now that's not to say it's a bad game, it's actually a pretty good game, and it actually uses the Tony Hawk Pro Skater engine. I'd say in a lot of respects it kind of lives up to that, although the fact that you basically don't have to be caring where the webs go can be a little distracting. Now, PlayStation 4, Spider-Man, wow. I would call that one of the bigger accomplishments in open world gaming, period. It's beautiful, it's detailed, it's big. It feels like there's so much to do at every moment. In every direction you look and there's city. You wanna go down to ground level, you do it. You wanna never touch the ground, you don't have to. Generally speaking, anyway. Spider-Man on PS4 is beautiful and it's beautiful while giving the player a pretty large amount of freedom. Something that just wasn't in the very linear Spider-Man 2000 video game. Part of that is certainly the graphical capabilities of the time. Number 7 is God of War 1 versus God of War 2018, and let's go ahead and say that these are two 
almost completely different games. The pacing of the original God of War game is very 1990s, mid-2000s action game. There are levels. The levels are more or less terrain that gives you a large amount of enemies coming your way, and God of War 2018 is kind of a slow-moving story-oriented affair. There's certainly similarities between the two, but the gameplay styles are not that similar, and this reflects itself pretty heavily in the graphics. The original God of War's camera was much more on rails, where God of War PS4 more or less encourages you to look at everything in detail. It's a beautiful game. It has nothing to hide. And while I don't necessarily think that having an on-rails camera is explicitly to hide the fact that a game is limited, technically speaking, it was certainly a thing a lot of mid-2000s games leaned on to keep their games at an acceptable level of detail. Number six is Battlefield 1942 versus Battlefield 5. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say that there's actually some good stuff in the older games. They don't just give you a bunch of horizontal planes and call them levels. It does actually attempt to be visually non-uniform. However, it also came out in 2002, so keeping that in mind, it's pretty rudimentary. The gun models in 1942 are actually pretty well detailed. However, the animations leave something to be desired. In my opinion, they're pretty over-exaggerated, which isn't necessarily a bad thing again, considering that it was actually probably one of the better looking games of its time. But even though it does work to have environments that break up a visual monotony, or rather don't create one, it's nothing compared to what you can see today. When you look at today's Battlefield 5, some of the environments could be mistaken for photos, and I realize that sounds ridiculous, but look at them, and especially look at them in comparison to the 1942 environments. You see individual rocks from a distance, you see texture, texture that doesn't repeat itself. You see all of this sort of chaotic existence, not stuff that's repeating itself, and I think that that's really impressive. In fact, I think that recent Battlefield games are essentially some of the more impressive looking games out there. But again, looking back at the original, it was way ahead of everything else back then. So it's kind of a tradition that that's how this series works. Number five is Tomb Raider versus Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, yeah, there's some obvious things you can say about the original Tomb Raider, but at the time, it was kind of a technological breakthrough. It looks borderline silly today, but you have to remember, there's a reason that people thought it was, you know, amazing looking, and that is that there was nothing else like that at all. It was basically the first mainstream game to have a 3D character model in it that reached the level of success it did. However, obviously, it's not a very realistic look, and some of the environments are just kind of a joke by today's standards. Now, again, that's not to take a dump on it. For its time, it was amazing. But looking at Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is an accomplishment of not only human character modeling, and animation for that matter. This is a game that has worked to create facial animation and hair systems and clothing systems that really just look amazing after three iterations of the series. But environmentally speaking, you go from kind of blatantly fake to pretty well convincing if you're engrossed in the game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is kind of beautiful if you consider all of the various lighting that it uses to achieve the desired effect. And there's nothing like that in the original Tomb Just nothing. Not even close. So, number four is Star Wars Battlefront 2004 versus Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 2017. A Battlefront 2004 is not a particularly detailed game. If we're talking about gameplay, it's probably a little bit dated in some respects, but if the modes that this game had were transferred into the current engine and graphical updates were made, it would certainly be a superior game to Star Wars Battlefront 2 2017. But I don't want to get too in the weeds comparing these games, because the graphics are just, they're not even comparable. The original Battlefronts were developed by Pandemic Studios, and really have that everything is a specific geometrical shape look of games of the time. With that in mind, it wasn't a bad looking game for the time, and it faithfully created an interesting Star Wars experience. Comparing that to Battlefront 2 2017, again, sort of ignoring the underwhelming nature of the game itself, it's graphically amazing. It's a game that DICE put out, and DICE knows what they're doing with graphics. Every single 
art-oriented thing about the game is amazing. It's perhaps one of the best looking, if not the best looking Star Wars game in existence. And that kind of sucks, because Battlefront 2004 and its sequel were both significantly better. And at number three, we have Lord of the Rings Return of the King, the high point of the action combat Lord of the Rings games that started with the Two Towers tie-in. Try to say that five times fast. And we're comparing it with the most recent Lord of the Rings game, Middle-Earth Shadow of War. Return of the King, for its time in 2003, looked really, really good. Now, there are obvious limitations with detail, but it holds up pretty well against Shadow of War, seeing as how they're both pretty styled after Peter Jackson's movies. It almost seems like no matter how high the polygon count is, dirty orcs are always just kind of dirty orcs. That's what they look like. But to see the video game vision of Middle Earth in the movie realm completely fully imagined in 2019 is a cool thing to see, and Shadow of War absolutely does that. Number two is Devil May Cry 1 versus Devil May Cry 5. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think Devil May Cry 1 is still a good looking game. When I go back and look at it, I think this is actually acceptable. If somebody released a game like this now, it would be clearly aimed at a specific type of nostalgia for a specific type of graphic style, but this isn't bad. There's good lighting effects, there's shadows, there's pretty good textures on most things. There's actually an HD remaster, which is not really a massive upgrade as far as most of the actual physical assets, but the resolution has been upgraded, and it exposes all of the kinds of weaknesses in these textures, and they aren't that weak. Again, you could release it today as a certain kind of nostalgic graphic style, and I don't think people would be too upset. Now that being said, Devil May Cry 1 was a very much on a fixed camera. The camera was on rails, it mostly followed you the way it wanted to, and although the game wasn't on any kind of 2D plane, sometimes it felt a little bit like it was. That is gone in Devil May Cry 5. The modern follow camera convention is there, as well as a steep increase in the quality of assets and effects. Devil May Cry 5 is an incredibly fluid, very detailed, and visually exciting experience. And yet it retains so much of all of the conventions we saw in the original Devil May Cry. In many ways, it's almost as if they never stopped making the series, and this is just the modern version of it. And that's a big compliment. To feel like it's evolved over years rather than is the first game in the series in a very long time and it feels authentically exactly what it's supposed to be, that's big. A big part of that is the visual style being a massive jump, but a faithful one. And finally, the last for part one, Resident Evil 2 versus the Resident Evil 2 remake, which we can do it. We can compare apples to oranges. What's funny is that the same title is itself both an apple and an orange based on its era. And let's talk about the apple side first. The original Resident Evil has tank controls, pre-rendered backgrounds, and very non-detailed character models. The Resident Evil 2 Remake has no pre-rendered backgrounds, it is fully rendered every single frame of the game, doesn't force you to navigate with tank controls, allows freedom of exploration, and gives you pretty much every bit of every view that you could want, sometimes a bit more so. Both of these games are fairly scary, and the remake shows us that it wasn't just because the tank controls were so bad and everything was so limited the first time around, but oh did it ever show us how limited everything was that first time around. The amount of detail realized in the Resident Evil 2 remake, not just in its move to 3D, but its massive expenditure of human labor to create the most amazing version of these environments possible, just dwarfs the original game. The original game, though it was pre-rendered, often had simply just empty walls in its environments. That doesn't exist here. Here everything has texture, everything has mass, everything feels very real. And it's pretty amazing, honestly. What were some games that you thought were particularly astounding back in the day, and do they hold up today? Do they have sequels? Do they compare? Leave us a comment, let us know what you're thinking, and if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.